Chapel Faith Apostolic Ministries present Manifest 2023, a musical celebration. Join us at the United Apostolic Church, 205 24 Hollis Avenue in Queens, New York, for two unforgettable evenings of praise and worship, July 7th and 8th, beginning 7 p.m. nightly. Hear choirs and groups from the tri state area ministering and blessing our souls. Contribution $40, which covers both nights. Come and be blessed. The Lord bless you, brethren beloved. Welcome to another Bible study this Wednesday evening. God has certainly been good to all of us, I am sure, and we all must give thanks and praise to the Most High. He is great and He is greatly to be praised. He deserves all the worship, all the glory, and all the honor that humankind can offer up. And so we must endeavor, every one of us, to give our best to the living God. He is just absolutely awesome. We're going back into study, and of course we will be continuing on the series, The Church. We have been focusing on the sub theme the judgment seat of christ and it is important that as children of god we understand clearly what it is that we are in what it is that we are a part of understand what it is that our responsibilities as sons and daughters of god are so that we can do what is required of us to do in a God-fearing way and make sure that we are smack in the middle of the will of God. We must understand what it is that is required of us, saints of God. And there is this tendency that permeates somehow across the church circles that find its way into the minds and into the hearts of his people for them to believe that all that is necessary all that is required is for folks to just be saved and once you are saved you then live anyway because at the end of the day you are going to make it into heaven and somehow the responsibility that we should have as children of God, as people of God, is not transmitted to us. And we have this mistaken notion that we can just walk in a laser fair way and live anyhow and do anything and conduct ourselves in any manner. And it doesn't really matter because grace has covered it all. I want us to understand, saints of God, that grace has covered it all. And God has done his part by pardoning us. God has done his part by extending to us, even though we did not deserve it, his unmerited favor. And grace has covered everything that is to be covered. But even within the framework of grace the grace of god which is so rich and so pure and so powerful even within this framework of grace there are some things that we are called upon to do as saints there is a particular lifestyle that we are called upon to live as children of the most high god 
And we need to understand and we need to be clear in our minds that we must live for him. Not in the way that we want to live, but in the way that he designed and expects and determined for us to live to please him. Our lives must please him. And if we are going to please him, we must know what it is that he wants, what it is that he's looking for, what it is that he's expecting of us. The absence of that is going to be crucial. It is going to be detrimental to us. The Bible tells us in the, Luke, the book of St. Luke chapter 12 and about verse 47 that he that knows to do the master's will and do it, it not shall be beaten with many stripes. And then it went, went on to say, he that didn't know will be beaten also with a few stripes. But in either case, whether we know or we don't know, we're going to be beaten because we should know. And so I do have a responsibility, saints of the Most High God, to transmit and to impart these things that are clearly outlined in the words of Almighty God. These are not things conjured up by men uh, placed in a position, but these things are what the word of Almighty God reflects. And we need to be careful that we know the thing and we know what is expected of us and we appreciate it and we embrace it and we live it. If we know and we do it, happy are ye happy we are if we don't know it is to our detriment so we need to tell our friends that don't tune into bible study that they better tune in no we need to pass the word around to those who say they cannot bother with bible study because a or b or c this is not about any individual teaching bible study this is the word of god so for those who skip it so that they can watch a favorite movie and for those who skip the breaking of the word so that they can indulge in other things, he that knoweth the will of his master and doeth it not shall be beaten with many stripes. And the, a time is coming, as we said last week and just to recap, when all of us, some folks, we are of the impression that those that are children of God, those that are saints of God, will not be judged by Almighty God. But that is contrary to scriptures. The unsaved will be judged and the saved people will be judged. Every man will be judged. But those who stand before the white throne judgment later on, their judgment is not going to be one just looking at works. Any man that stands before the white throne judgment of God, his final destination is going to be the lake of fire. But he will be judged. The children of God, it's different. We will be judged. But our judgment is not going to be one of condemnation where we are going to be consigned afterwards to a lake of fire. No, no, no. Once we are children of God and we made it in the rapture, there is no hell for us again so it will not be a judgment to condemnation and we want to make that clear in our minds but then God did say and speaking through the apostle Paul that every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the things that we have done in this life whether good or bad and it is important important saints of God that we take the time out. It is important saints of God that we allow for this to seep into our system and to seep into our souls so that we take stock of who we are and what it is that we are doing. Now, now is the time for us to introspect. Now is the time for us to do what in secular terms we call stock taking so that we can see if we have enough in stock or if things are running down or if things are going out of whack and make the necessary adjustments now none of us 
will be exempt. And it doesn't matter our position in the church. It doesn't matter our status in the society. None of us that name the name of Jesus is going to be exempt. It's going to be glossed over. None of us can claim that we are Jesus' best friend. And so he will overlook this or overlook that. I submit to every child of God that we are going to stand before the throne and he is going to make all things bare and he is going to expose what is to be exposed. He's going to clarify what was behind a veil of darkness and cloud over the years and we will see, we will understand that that day is going to bring everything into a particular focus. Our reputation will be out. Our character, our true character will be revealed. And God will thereafter decide to do what he will do. Later on in the presentation, whether it's this afternoon, this evening, or next week, we are going to reach a point where we touch on why exactly would God want us to go through this process of judgment and to issue rewards, yes, to us. And we will see that there is a reason because the rewards is not merely crowns upon our head and, and, and anything, or a medal over our neck or anything like that. It's much more than that. And we are going to get into it because we can recall in scripture where it speaks about we are going to be made rulers over many nations and rulers over five and some will be rulers over X amount. And what will determine who becomes ruler and who becomes leader over what? We were promised that we shall reign as kings and priests. And later on in the book of Revelation, we were promised that we are going to reign with him and we are going to rule the nations. From whence will this rulership come? How will we and where will we be given what it is that our particular lot will be and how many cities we will have jurisdiction over and what we will have management responsibility for? etc 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 i submit and we are going to go into it later on that what we do in our lives today how we live today will determine what happens to us at the judgment seat of christ where when he's giving those rewards and commendations and medals and all included in all of that will be what it is He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou in the joy of the Lord. You shall have this over these nations. You shall have that. You shall be my governor over here. You shall be the royal this over there. These are the things that we will be issued. Where will we get the opportunity to exercise this rulership? In that period that is to come. That is called the millennium. But we're not going into that now. But suffice it to say that... All we are talking about is leading somewhere and it will be manifested later on when we are sent or we go with our Lord Jesus Christ in that day when he sits upon the throne and he gets back to this earth. We are coming back to this earth with him even after we are raptured and we are going to recognize that there's going to be a whole world still here and we are going to go right into the millennial reign and you and i based on how we lived our lives here and now will be given rewards that will allow for us to be rulers and leaders in that life to come and so we must be very careful, brothers and sisters, how we live our lives. I pray and trust that none of us will stand empty-handed when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And it is a serious thing. Paul, in speaking to the Corinthians, told, told them, you know, look, let every man get their thing together because we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the things done in this life. And Paul went on to say, knowing the terror of the Lord. In other words, it is not going to be just a little walk over saints of God. It is going to be a serious event. Paul used the word knowing the terror of the Lord. And it is in relation 
to the judgment seat of Christ where every one of us will stand. I want you to know it is going to be a big thing. It is going to be a major deal. Do not take it lightly. I am speaking to myself. I am speaking to the children of God. I am speaking to the people of God. Do not take it lightly. There are ministers here and there are ministers there and there are pastors here and there are apostles everywhere. And everybody talks one thing or the other. Nobody wants to sit down and give us the, the grit and the, the seriousness of what we are in and what is to come. Do not trifle with your salvation. Do not lay aside the things that are contained in the word of Almighty God. And so I have a responsibility and I am discharging it and making all of us know what is expected of us and what will be happening at that time. And so in love, we share this for all of us so that we can take the necessary steps and make the necessary moves so that we are prepared that when we depart this life, either through death or the rapture, we will be ready to stand before the great king who is going to test every work that we have done since the time that we got saved. And so the Lord bless you. When we uh, sat last week, we had outlined that God is going to judge us and his judgment is going to be fear. F-A-I-R. Nobody needs to wonder if the Lord is going to, you know, throw something and judge us for something that we had nothing, no control over. No, no, no. He's not like that. He's God Almighty. He knows all things. And one thing we can be certain of, that he is going to be fair in his dealings with us because he is a just God. Make no mistake about it. Then the second thing that we had touched on is that in addition to his judgment being fair, his judgment is going to be thorough. And we had started that when we met last week. And so we will pick up from there. And we will pick up from there and take it on into this week and continue there, there on. So this evening, we are turning to the slide and we will be looking at, and let's put it up on the board, we will be looking at We will be judged thoroughly. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. And I just want us, we had started some of it last week. And there is some more that I did not mention last week. We will pick it up today and then continue on. So remember now, there are four things that we must be very clear on. That one, we will be judged fairly. We looked at that last week. Then today we are going to continue on. We will be judged thoroughly. Then thirdly, we are going to be judged impartially. And then finally, we are going to be judged individually. And so I want us to remember those four things. So as it is now, we are at the second we will be judged thoroughly. And so Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10 states, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every man may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Brethren, beloved, we will be judged, every one of us, to receive the things done in his body according to that he 
has done. And it is extremely, extremely, extremely important that we understand and that we recognize and that we are clear, clear, clear in our minds that we will be judged. Now, and we're turning the slides, so we're just a minute, yeah, right. Now, I want us to understand something because I want us to make it clear. We have touched at this last week, um, and I just, I'm just expanding on it now, saints of God. Paul used the phrase, we shall appear at the judgment seat of Christ. And so we are talking about how thorough this thing is going to be. Let us just look at what the word appear really means, what it is really bringing out. It's from the Greek word phanero, which means to be made manifest. The imagery is that we shall be turned inside out. All right? We shall be turned inside out. It is like somebody going into somebody's pocket and just pull it out to see what is inside if any money is there. You ever look at a, a, a pants pocket pulled out from the inside? It's just laid bare, empty. Or, so we make the point again, stripped of every outward facade. I want us to understand that as we live today, saints of God, we have this thing about us that we have a poise and we tend to have this pious look or we can dress up in a certain way and and hide some things about us you might look at me sometimes and see me in a suit and say oh what a blessed man or you can see a, a sister in her dress and her hat on a sunday at church and you say what a, a god-fearing woman but many times and for many people the what we have on and how we speak when we are in a certain company is just a facade it is just outward actions based on where we are. But if you see some of us in our real action, when we are away from the crowd, when we are away from church, when we are at places where we often frequent, whether work or school, we see a different person. And I am submitting to us, should we make it in the rapture, when we stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, he is going to strip away every facade and the real you and I is going to come out, is going to be revealed so that that word that is used to say we shall appear before the judgment seat, it means we are going to be revealed before the judgment seat. We are going to be opened up and stripped and lay bare before the judgment seat. And many folks did not understand this. All of our hypocrisies and our concealments. Right? Because it's not everything that we'll do will banish us to hell. For some things are, are, are weights that can easily heavy us down, weigh us down in our walk with God. And for whatever reason, there are folks that carry the, the, this weight Sometimes over and over and over again. They carry this weight over and over and over again. But the day is going to come, saints of God, when all of these things are going to be exposed. And the real you, the real you shall stand at the, in, before the Lord and will be made manifest. The real you is going to be made manifest. So we need to bear that in mind. We need to bear that in mind. And let me go further. All our intimate thoughts and deeds which oppose the kingdom, they will be open to the scrutiny of our Lord Jesus Christ. So remember that sin. So the things that we harbor in our minds today it is going to come back to haunt us. And I think the Apostle Paul, in his speaking to the church, you know, he, he, he encourages us how we ought to think whatsoever things are good and whatsoever things are pure and whatsoever things are honest and whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue 
and if there be any praise he was encouraging us to think on these things it is very important scenes of God that we understand that we are going to stand before him and the inner things, the things that are in our very minds. So we, we show one face in church, but in, in our minds, we are tearing it down. We show one face in church, but in our minds, we are opposing. Can you imagine in a church, can you imagine in a body of Christ, anywhere across this world, folks are planning to go to do track distribution or to do witnessing or something like that. And there are folks that are saying, why are they going now? This look how the sun hot is. Why they don't wait till evening? Why they don't wait till night time? And not knowing that the evening time has its own dangers and has its own uh, things that might go against the move of God. When we must be careful saints that when it comes to the work of God, when it comes to anything that has to do with kingdom business especially, we must be careful. We can show one side, but deep inside there is an opposition to it. Do not oppose the work of God if we make it in the rapture. Because there are other things, and we're going to talk about that in another subject area outside of the judgment seat of Christ. But there are things that we can do which will cause us to lose out altogether in making it into God's heaven. And the Bible speaks about it because Paul in talking to the church tell them that they who are indulging in these things will not enter the kingdom of God. So there are some things that saints are involved in and continue to, it has now become a part of their lifestyle, their way of life, the way in which they treat with the things of God. It has reached the point where it has now become sin. And Paul lists some things that those who condone, and not only condone, live them, practice them, and those who take pleasure in them that do them, will not have any part in the kingdom of God. In fact, they will be consigned, according to the apostle, to hell. So that's another subject here, and we will be doing that as a part of the, the series that we are doing on the church. But for, so let that remain for the time being, and let us not be distracted there. But we are talking about those now who will make it in the rapture. And we make it in the rapture, we are going to stand before God. And our, our innermost thoughts, and the, even when we do things, we might do things without the right motivation and it is going to come before God. We will touch on that in a little while. And notice that the Bible said we are going to give an account for all the things done in our body, whether good or bad. And I said it the last time. I'm repeating it now. There are good things that we can do and there are bad things that we can do. And that is extremely, extremely important for us to understand so, yes, we would have made it in the rapture. And now we would have been standing in front of the judgment seat of Christ. How is it that Paul is saying good or bad? If we do bad, how will we make it in the rapture? So we need to understand that it is not everything that we do. Because there are some things that are bad, but they are considered weights. And they might not stop us from making it in the rapture. But certainly, we are going to be called before the Lord to give an account. And brethren, I, we're going to come to the point where we're going to see some things when we stand before him. For folks will be there. Yes, we, and all that I am saying right now is to make the point that our judgment, our testing as we stand before him is going to be thorough. It is going to be a test of the things that was in our mind. It is going to be a test of what was motivating us and we're coming down to it as we go through the rest of the slide but it is going to be thorough and it is going to be meticulous and don't forget that the good deeds will be lovingly remembered for sure you, you know that water that you bought for someone you see them on the road and you're thirsty i think as saints of god many of us have lost sight of real christianity we just come to church and throw offering and sing a song and do something for the day. And then we go back home. And that is the, the extent of Christianity 
for some of God's people. But I want us to know that Jesus is still expecting some things of us in terms of how we live our lives daily, how we take care of our neighbors, our brothers and our sisters. It is extremely important, saints of God, that we understand that true Christianity is a way of life. And that bottle of water that we bought for someone that we saw on the road that was uh, thirsty or that food, that lunch that we helped someone to get. We go to taste and we buy two patties and cocoa bread and, and then we see this person at the door. Never a day our bowels of compassion have ever been moved and we have an extra and we say, let me buy this for this guy or this girl. You know, even though we can, yes, it is true that we don't know who some of these people are. Some of them are real generals and all. But who have we really helped? Who have we really stretched our hands across to and say, let me do this for a suffering neighbor? You don't have to know somebody to help them. And there are people who you are going to help. It's not all the while you're going to lend somebody something and get it back. There are some folks that you're going to have to give it to them. They just cannot afford to repay us and you're going to have to just give it. I challenge any one of us that we work and we work hard that's so true so many others would want to work and work hard like you and cannot because they cannot get the work and so they are suffering and they are in agony and oh for the love of god to be strong in the heart and in the life of a child of god that they can help somebody as they walk along and that they can share with somebody a word or a song or a, some funds to get something to eat. I want us to understand that this is true Christianity. This is works. This is good works. What the Lord is actually looking for. And we must never ever lose sight of that. So those are things that are good. And I'm telling you, Jesus said, you will not lose your reward even for a bottle of water. He used the word a cup of water given to somebody that is in need of it. Your reward is going to be sure. And those are good things. And those will stand before him. But brethren, brethren beloved, they are also the bad things. Worthless. And they will be a negative counterbalance for that which is good, for those good things that you have done. So but what I, this is to say that we must be very careful. Because even though we may be doing something good, we may also be doing some things bad. And be careful that the bad don't cancel out the good. In the sense that, yes, you did five good things. But can you imagine while you do five good things, you do ten bad things? That is when it stands before God and the test of his scrutiny, it is going to be burnt up. It is going to be worthless as you stand before him. And we must be very careful saints of God, because that day is coming when whether the thing is good or bad, we are going to stand before him. And that is what is going to be crucial. As we go into the study, and I believe in another three sessions or so, we can wrap this thing up. But as we go further, we are going to look exactly what the Lord will be looking for. Because the Bible outlines it. And it is important that we understand again, you know, and this is why Bible study is important. You taking the time of going through your Bible, not just to read a page and read a text every now and then, but to study the thing because contained in the book are the things that are necessary to allow for us to have the mastery in this life. And we can know and will know because it is in the word what exactly the Lord will be looking for when we stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ. And that is comforting to us because then we will know from now how to prepare ourselves and where to focus our attention and the kind of manner in which we approach whatever things it is that we do. And it is very, 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 very important that we understand that. So we are going to come to that. But for the time being, we continue to, to, to focus for us to understand that the judgment, it is going to be fear, and then the judgment, it is going to be sorrow. Now, the Corinthian church, and I, I won't go through this part much because we did it last time, and they had a lot of bickering among themselves, and 
Paul had to tell them, look, you need to stop now. Um, and he gave them the reason. In fact, let us just read 1 Corinthians 5 to see the reason. And then we can skip over after that as, because I want us to look at some other things. But there is always the tendency to be saying people, this one did that and that one did that. And we accuse our brethren of this and that. And we accuse um, each other of different things. And some people cannot even defend themselves because folks come together with devious motives. You, would, you better believe to try to sabotage or to try to turn over or to try to stifle what it is that is there and we need to understand that these things happen it happened then while the apostles were around and if it happened in their time it will happen now it will happen in the future but paul was saying something that even though these things are there some things we will resolve and get to the bottom of it some things we can never resolve because you don't even know where it is coming from but paul said something to the church at corinth and here is what he said in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. So something it doesn't make sense, you better judge it. Leave it until the Lord comes. And Paul said this 2,000 years ago almost. And it's still not dealt with as yet. However, saints of God, the day is coming, the time is coming when the Lord himself is going to come. And here's what he then said, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest and will make plain and will bring out into the open and, and will expose the counsels of the heart. I'm telling you, saints, it is going to be a sorrow judgment. So yes, he's going to judge us fairly, but then he's also going to judge us thoroughly turning things inside out exposing the hidden things of darkness what is in the heart what was in the mind what was behind the source what was behind trying to tear down that sister and to tear down that brother the jealousy that was there that caused you to do this and cause folks to turn away from walking after god i'm telling you saints of god it is going to be exposed and the apostle John, one of the time when he wrote, you know, he said, he prayed that we look for the Lord. And when the Lord come, we are not ashamed at a shame that is coming. Why would be ashamed that is coming? Because we are going to have to stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ. And when we stand before him, how can we be ashamed if, if he raptures us and takes us up to heaven? The only way that we are going to be ashamed, the only reason for us to be ashamed the only basis upon which that statement can be true and i guarantee you it cannot be a lie because it is the word of god we will be ashamed that is coming because when he comes and we stand before him we are going to having given our reasons and our motives for doing some things we are going to be ashamed at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to stand before him and we are going to be ashamed. So the scripture, it says that he will make manifest and, and the counsels of the heart. And then know that, look at the last part, then shall every man have praise of God. In other words, clarity will come. And those that had doubts will now know this was what really happened. And so it can be moved. Some things will only be cleared up at the judgment seat of Christ. Clarity will come. Vindication will come. People will be vindicated and others now will be shown up that what they were doing was all a lie and it was only because of jealousy in some instance or whatever else it was. But it is going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ. So we must be careful. So Paul said, uh, let us not just push at these things. Leave something until Jesus Christ, the great Savior, the great judge come. It is only when we are there that matters will be cleared up and there will be a resolution to some things. And listen, you see those things that are in the innermost parts of our system that nobody else sees and knows? And we have reasoned in our mind that you know, it has to be this way. We have rationalized and reasoned it out. And then we, we embrace it as truth. 
because in our minds we don't want to accept some things we must be careful of our convictions and how we try to dispose of it we must be careful of our convictions and how we try to dispel it some of us can be idolizing a certain manner of life a certain way of life that we want to live and at all costs we will rationalize and reason out something that makes it become palatable and acceptable that is idolatry so we better be careful if we make it depending on the extent to which we go should we make it and we stand before god we will have to understand that at the judgment these revelations will come out and we are going to be ashamed and they will have some role to play in what ultimate position you then hold as a part of your reward going into the, 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 the life which you would have been in at that time the new arena the new beginnings so to speak so be very careful saints of god it is going to be thorough it is going to be meticulous in terms of the judgment and uh, therefore we ought to be very clear on that now i want us to remember also that because right now i'm sure like myself some of us are trembling you, you know right now some of us are introspecting even as i am talking i am speaking and i am introspecting and i imagine some folks are scared to death but that's all right because it is the word of god and it is better we know now so that we can make adjustments to our lives now what is past is past remember god has forgiven sins but there are some consequences that will come and we're going to have to stand up to those consequences later on but then we have an opportunity right here and now to make adjustments to the way that we think make adjustments to you know why and how we do things because as we go further we will have an opportunity to do it the right way so that when we stand before god as the apostle john said we will not be ashamed but we will be glad at his appearing because we know how we have been doing things be very very careful now while the judgment seat is going to be hot so to speak it will also be a time of comfort for some because some folks who were pressured some folks who were constantly being criticized and fairly criticized some folks who were misunderstood and so forth and as a result this was said of them or that was said of them. it is going to be a time of comfort for them for prior to that they could not defend themselves some of them didn't even know some of what was being said about them some of them heard and had no means and ways of defending themselves and so they had to just leave it at the judgment seat of christ there will be comfort because those things would have been now revealed and this person who was seen in a certain light will be vindicated and so will be seen in the true light of what it was that they did these are what some of the things that will come out at the judgment seat of christ and that's why we say it is the judgment is going to be thorough it is going to be very very thorough now if i can interject here we speak about things being recorded years ago there was a an incident in which a prominent jamaican was killed uh he was killed using a knife a knife was used to stab him to death but then when the police started to investigate deeper into it they found that it was a gathering and it appeared that it was a gathering of gay people homosexual men and nobody knew who would have killed this prominent jamaican a very prominent jamaican person and the information coming out of the investigation is that there were other prominent jamaicans that were at that party but it was a all men homosexual party and everybody was okay 
for a while in the sense that they couldn't find who committed the act. They couldn't uh, somehow get any lead to solve that case. And it just was dying a natural death until word got out that there was a tape. And on the road it was started to be rumored if you ever know who was on the tape. And all of a sudden it was said that men in high society start tremble. And, everybody, and it was said that the tape was at a police station and people were trying to find it but the top prominent men in the society got to the tape first and no matter how they tried to get the tape as evidence it could not be found nobody knew that the man in his house had a recording machine in the roof it was very small he had a recording machine in the rooms so when all the fandangles were going on and the men were there doing their thing it was being recorded unknown to them so when it hit the road that everything is caught on the tape i hear that pepto bismol run out at the pharmacy because every man had belly ache running belly everything but brethren that is what recordings do it tells you it indicates that you will not be able to defend yourself because the evidence is right here can i submit to you to me to all of us saints of god that a record is being made of our lives right now in heaven our lives are being recorded and i don't know how god does it i don't know what he's going to do but one thing i know and i heard this from people in high science all of us are able to remember things going all the way back to our youth and even if we don't remember them now for different reasons age and different things one little stimulation of a particular part of our brain can bring back and sometimes fright stimulate that section of the brain i've heard folks saying when they were in a near accident that they see their whole life run before them i have actually heard folks saying that when a gunman came and stick up the place where they worked it's like they, they see their whole life just play out in front of them and at different times i've heard that something stimulated a particular part of their brain I recall just recently I was at home and I heard a song playing and as the song started to play the green green grass of home I heard the song and all of a sudden I saw myself 1976 sitting down in my grade 5 classroom I heard that song for the first time um, while I was at school leaving my house heading to school and as the song played just the other day, it touched something in my brain. And all of a sudden, I remember the smell. I saw the khaki clothes that I had on. I remember the song playing as I walked across the road going. And this was 1976, probably over 40 years ago. And brethren beloved, one phrase of a song stimulated something inside of me and i remembered everything coming all the way back on another occasion something stimulated a part of my brain and i remembered when we moved from jonestown to come to the park to live and i was only probably three or three and a half years of age i remember the chalk i remember the color of the safe that was going in the, into the van and it was clear and vivid in my mind brethren beloved when god opens the book and that part in our mind is stimulated however that is going to happen i don't know but i am telling us we will not be able to justify ourselves before god and when he opens the book and when he asks the question we will have no answer and he's going to be just he's going to be fear but he's going to be sorrow i want us to understand the sins of god that every thought every action every word is being recorded 
right now. And so we need to be very careful, yes, that we treat with what we have very, very wisely. We will not need when we get there any time to gather evidence. Everything will be there. The books will be there. The record will be there. The recordings are being made now. And probably all the Lord Jesus will say, play the tape. Yes, play the tape. And our minds will be there to look back and say, yes, it did happen. We will not be able to mount a defense. Brethren, beloved, understand that. There will not be the need for any jurors to hear the arguments. No, no, no lawyers will be able to defend you. And even if it's a lawyer in church, it doesn't matter. No lawyers because everyone, once you're in church, lawyer, police, doctor, you are going to be standing and your turn is going to be coming and you are going to have to give an account to him for yourself. So every detail will be there. Nobody can dispute the outcome because it will be just. And we cannot disagree with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I am telling us that is going to be a very, very, very thorough analysis of our lives. All right. So we move to number three because we are talking about the judgment. The first, remember now we said the first one, we will be judged fairly. Secondly, we will be judged thoroughly. And now thirdly, we will be judged impartially. Right? And when Paul outlined the principles by which God will judge us, and he outlines these things, he's talking to different one of the saints, he's talking to the Corinthians, he's talking to the Romans, and one of the things that he brought across very vividly in Romans 2 is that he declared that there will be no partiality with God. It doesn't matter if we're apostles and bishops and pastors and missionaries and evangelists and teachers and it does not matter saints of God there will be no partiality with God there is no respect of persons with God and make no mistake about that this thing that some folks say I spoke to the Lord and he tell me to do this it's not in the Bible or the Bible speak against it but you talk to the Lord and he impress upon you and so say, you can do it. That's a lie. You cannot do it. And you did not hear from God. But sir, I you did not hear from God. And if it goes contrary to the word, no matter how you dream and no matter how you get up speaking in tongues, you, it is not God. Once it contravenes the word, it is not God. And I want us to be, clear, to be clear on that. So we will be judged impartially. He's not going to use anything special and say, you were my best friend and, or you were the one that did these things for me. No, no, no. In fact, I want to tell us this. You see, people like pastors and missionaries and all these ministers and heads of department who had greater responsibility and had things to do to benefit the body of Christ let me submit to you that they will be judged by a stricter standard James 3 and verse 1 tells us right they were given greater responsibilities my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall well I think that's the, the, the not the scripture that I wanted but listen to me we need to understand that we are going to be held to a higher standard. And none of us, because of our position, none of us, because of what it is that we do in the body of Christ, can feel any comfort that God will overlook this because I was his right hand man or I, I was his left hand man. It will be nothing like that. It will be impossible partial to the core and we will stand not 
as bishop or evangelist or minister this or anything like that but we will stand as an individual and will be impartially questioned as we stand before him who never makes a mistake and who knows all things and knows it well every trapping of man our position our status in life Every one of those things will fade away as we stand before him who discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12, and you can read that later on. He is going to be looking beyond the facade, beyond the, 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 the pretty face, the handsome face, beyond the preaching and the singing, beyond the... The, the, the testimonies that he's going to be looking beyond all of these things there. And he is going to be drilling down into our thoughts and the intents of our hearts. So yes, it's going to be impartial. Now, in the presence of the Lord. As we stand. He will determine what it is that we did with what he gave us. It is important that we understand that. And at the end of the day, the divine verdict is really what matters. What will God conclude about me? So that part, that second point, that, that third point that says, our second point that says the judge will determine what we did with what he gave us. Is going to be crucial is going to be crucial crucial as we go forward I wanted to stress on that for probably a minute I want to zoom in on that he has given to us some five talents some two talents he has given to us different things he has given to us health. He has given to us abilities. And I submit to us, some of us use our talents to glorify ungodly things. There are men and women that have left the house of God, that have left the presence of God because of how God had, give, had gifted them in the house of God with the talent that God gave us, with the gifting that God gave them. They worked and perfected it to an extent. And then to acquire fame and fortune, many have left the presence of God. Some will come back, but we're going to still stand before the judgment seat. I will go and talk about why we left. But I beg those who left, come back. For there will still be hope. Because those who left and don't come back, don't worry. You're not going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But you're going to stand before the white throne judgment. You would have walked away from the presence of Almighty God. I say this to stimulate fear in our minds. That we must be careful with how God has gifted us and what we do with these giftings. He has given things to us. He has given talents to us. He has given us time. He has given us talents. He has given us treasures. Some people in the church of God have money, business and money, and they give the littlest to the things of God. Make somebody that is a high-flying society person, make a big politician come and ask for a campaign contribution. And in the church, nothing is wrong if you support a particular group and you make a pledge to them. But imagine you give God a thousand dollars and to the campaign of a political party, you give a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars because it's a high society person and they do this and they do that he has given us treasures funds businesses 
so that we can know how to use these things to bless the kingdom, which is what really matters. And so we have to be careful how we think because we articulate it in our minds. Sometimes we don't say it, but in our minds. And that is going to be opened up. I'm not giving it to church and make pastor and the leaders them take it and do what they want. No, no, no. But you will give it to the politician. And the same politician take it. You give them a million, 500 men go here and the other five go into the campaign. Brethren, beloved, we need to understand if you genuinely give up your treasure to the work of the ministry, you will be blessed for what you do. And so you will be very careful of that. You make sure that you're clearing your mind, that your motive and your giving is for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God. And you give accordingly. You are going to be called up. We are going to be called up for how we treated with our treasures. And I'm not only talking about people with big money. If you only get $100,000 and $300,000 a month, you have a responsibility while you take care of your house to do something for the kingdom of God. We are going to be called to give an account for our stewardship, brethren, beloved. With our time, it is the same. 24 hours in a day for anybody. Be very careful. We are going to be called to account to how we spend our time. What do we do with our 24 hours? And our talent, we are going to stand before God. This is a day of introspection. This is a day when we leave Bible study tonight. Personally, I want to start reassessing or continue to reassess what I do with my day, what I do with my talents, whatever it is that I find that I am talented or gifted to do, how I use it, who I use it for. I am making every, every effort to document it and try to order and reorder my life. But this is a time for trembling. And this will help us because I believe that this was the intention of the Apostle Paul to help the saints when they understand what is coming at the judgment seat of Christ. They take much more seriously how they conduct their lives here on earth. Earth is where it's at. This is what is going to determine where and how we spend eternity. This is where it is at. What we do in this life as Christians is going to determine the kind of rewards that we get. So for the saved and the unsaved, this earthly experience is what is going to make the difference, is what is going to determine what happens next. And so it is important, saints of the Most High God, to understand that He is going to judge us for what we do or what we did with what he has given us. Bear that in mind. Never forget it. So he's going to judge us fairly. He's going to judge us thoroughly. And he is going to judge us impartially. And I go back to the screen so that we can... Just wrap up this section. So it is important that we understand that we are going to have to give an account. Yes. With, to him for what he has given us. And so fourthly now. Fourthly. We will be judged individually. So let me run through again from the top. We will be judged fairly. We will be judged thoroughly. We will be judged impartially. And now we will be judged individually. Some of us love to be amongst the saints of God. We somehow get our energies there and we are able to, uh, you know, counter certain things that comes with the adversary because we are together with the saints and we like to be around the saints and nothing is wrong with that. But I want us to understand that there are some things that are very personal. Our walk with God, first of all, is personal. No matter how people are there when we pray through, and no matter how people are there in church, 
when on a Sunday when we are magnifying him and we are corporately worshipping. Nothing is wrong with that. But when it came to salvation, you as an individual had to seek him. You as an individual had to call upon him and repent. You as an individual had to go in the water to be baptized in his name. You as an individual. There are some things that it requires an individual response, an individual input, your salvation, your walk with God. It is individual. And I submit to you, saints of the Most High God, that when we stand before him, it is going to be not a church. It is not going to be an organization that he looks at to see what the organization has done and how many people were there. There are some folks that are looking at numbers. Look how much people come to church last week and look how much people did that and how much people... L l let me tell us, we better walk right because when we stand before him, it is going to be an individual judgment. Romans chapter 14 verses 10 to 12 outlines this clearly and, and, and crisply and I want us to Take a quick look at it. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at north thy brother? And here is Paul talking to the Romans. Again, is the, look at the term. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So he has brought up this judgment seat of Christ. Remember that we saw this before in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. He's talk, he was talking to the Corinthians. And he used the same term, the judgment seat of Christ. So there's something about this, and we are going to drill it down a little bit more shortly. But Paul is saying to the Romans, we shall all stand before the, the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, Every one of us shall give an account of himself. Brethren, beloved, look at it again. Every one of us shall give account of himself. Not the church. Not Brother Daly giving account for the church. For whereas some other things play some responsibility on leaders, that is another matter. But here at the judgment seat, there is going to be a fear judgment. There is going to be a thorough meticulous judgment. There is going to be an impartial judgment. And brethren, there is going to be an individual judgment. And verse 12 of Romans chapter 14 is saying that Oh, every one of us shall give an account of himself. Forget about the other person. All those persons that are, you are looking to and you are leaning on now, that give you advice, whether good or bad. All those persons that are your idols, that they tell you to do this and you jump and you do it. Even if it is bad, you will have no excuse and you cannot say, Sister Jane did influence me to do that. You cannot say, Brother G had influenced me to do that. Because you did it. And you, O oh man, are going to be called into account before Almighty God. For himself. Every man for himself. And so that is very important. No. As I said just now, notice the term seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. Same term that was used in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. Now that term is derived from the Greek word bima. Right? Bima is the judgment seat of Christ. And it refers to a platform, like a stand, a raised platform where some Roman magistrate or ruler sat. They sat there with their chair and they made decisions or passed judgment on issues. Also, in the same Greek era and Greek period, the word is taken from the Isthmian Games, what we kind of call Olympics, where the contestants 
would compete for prizes that were going to be given in a kind of contest. Yes, and of course, as usual, there will be the judges that were there. So that this judgment seat, this bima, sorry, this bima, it speaks to two things, which essentially is the same. It's a platform, and on it sits that Roman leader, a ruler, a magistrate, somebody in high authority. And there, if a decision is to be made or some sentences to be passed, they do it right there. Similarly, in the instance of the game, the games, uh, a high official sits on that beamer and he looks around and he participates and he watches all that is happening in the games. And at the end of the different events, folks would come and folks would know, based on their performance, get that prize in our terminology it would be like a gold medal or a silver medal or a bronze medal and then a wreath is placed over your head it's it's similar to, to what is the the olympics and those that win they have some major prize that they will receive now these judges also make sure that every rule of the contest was followed before bestowing the reward right before bestowing the rewards to those that were victorious. In other words, a man might claim to be victorious and then he gets disqualified because he didn't go according to the rules. And I want us to understand every man must strive lawfully. In other words, in other words, we must make sure, make sure saints of God. And I'm using the same analogy just to Bring the thing across to us. Make sure that every one of us, as we run in this race, we follow the rules. And the rules is in the rule book. And it is not a thou shall not, thou shall not, this and thou shall and thou shall not. No, 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 no. But within the book, there are the spiritual things that are given to us that guides how we walk and how we talk and how we conduct ourselves. Those are the rules. Those are the things that are going to be the rails. And we have to be very careful because sometimes we might think that we are doing the right thing. It is coming straight from here. But if we do it unlawfully, in other words, if we do it outside of what the rules require, we can be disqualified. And being disqualified in the context of the judgment seat of Christ means that we will lose our rewards. What would have been there for us would have been taken away so we won't lose our salvation because we are there already, but we will lose our rewards. Can we lose rewards? Yes. And we will see it. Not that anybody can take it away from you, but you would have given up your right by virtue of doing some things outside of the rules. I recall the Olympics in the 19, was it in the 1980s? I think it was when there was a, one of the fastest men of all times. His name was Ben Johnson. And Ben Johnson was running against another of the fastest of all times. His name was Carl Lewis. And the big thing was between Ben Johnson of Canada and Carl Lewis of the United States of America. Of course, other fast, powerful men were there, but they were, these were the big guns. And the race went off, and the two men shot to the front. And when everybody's eyes were on Carl Lewis, thinking that he would have been the one that would have won, Ben Johnson from Canada shot through that race, and man, he was the champion of champions. He beat Carl Lewis. He won the race. And he was now the man that was going to be endued, that was going to be given the gold medal. The 100 meter Olympic champion was Ben Johnson, and Ben Johnson was to be given the gold medal. But within hours, they found out that he did not play according to the rules, he had taken drugs, he had taken as it is claimed, performance enhancing steroids. And though he ran, and though he did well, 
And though he came first, he was disqualified because he did not strive lawfully. He did not follow the rules. The rules said no substance that enhanced your performance. And evidently, it would appear, he took them and they disqualified him. And he did not get the gold medal. And the goal went to Carl Lewis. What am I saying? We are in Paul use the analogy of the Olympics or the games because it brought across clearly what was happening in the spiritual realm. And Paul said that every man that is striving for the mastery, do it lawfully. In other words, do it according to the rules. And the rules is set by the judge himself, Jesus Christ. Do not make nobody tell you about no rules that cannot be substantiated within the word of Almighty God. Or do not make anybody tell you to not follow what is already substantiated in the words of Almighty God. Because when you stand before him, it is every man to give an account for himself you better make sure that you understand and work with your conviction and if your conviction is not in line with the word the word is the standard bearer the word is the rule book so i'm not convicted so what oh i'm not convinced so what what did the book say and that is what is the standard bearer and that is what we must use so that we make sure that we strive lawfully and it's very important so the bema yes is that greek word and it talks about that person that judge sitting on that raised platform and it is going to be similar when we stand before the judgment seat of christ he will sit there as judge he will sit there as rewarder he will sit there as the one who is going to give the awards and the rewards. And he would have had an eye on the games as we are living in our lifetime. You will know if you broke the rules. If you, you would know if you cheated here or there. He will know you cannot get outside of the scope of the vision of Almighty God. His eyes go to and fro in all the earth and he's watching and he's recording everything and we are going to have to individually stand before him to give an account for how we ran this race the careful sins of almighty god that we don't strive and then when we finish we realize that we were doing some of the things unlawfully. In other words, outside of the rule. That's what the other assistants that were there with the judge were looking out for to see if anybody break the rule. Just like in the games, if when they shoot the gun, before the gun go off, some people start unfair advantage. They call it pick start. You can be disqualified. If you run out of lane, they call it obstruction. You can be disqualified. Brethren, beloved, it sounds stringent and hard. But let me tell you this. It is not because we have the Holy Ghost and we have the work of God. Work with your spirit. Work with the Holy Ghost. Live in the word. And we are breaking these things for us to understand and making it plain to all of us. I want us to understand that this, that is being projected by many leaders across the place, that you just come in and anything and from you say that prayer and you got the Holy Ghost and you got baptized, that's it. And when the trumpet sound, whenever that time that comes, you can never be lost again and everything is all right and the judgment took place at Calvary and all of that. We have placed that into perspective already. And the judgment at Calvary paid the price for sin that you and I couldn't pay. And so we did what we had to do to have the relationship with the Lord and grace would have covered us. But having been covered by grace, the good Lord now says that you are saved by grace. And having now been saved by grace, you're saved to do.
good work. And these good works is what's going to follow you. And I'm telling you, saints of God, these are the things that God will, is going to be looking at as we stand before him to see what we would have done. And it is very, very, very important that we understand. And that's why we are going through bit by bit. We must understand. Let me go back to the slide as I wrap up this last part here. Amen. Amen. So Paul was picturing the believer as a competitor in a spiritual contest. But that is exactly what it is. And so Paul did all of that. Yes. So that we can understand that we are in a race and what we are doing now will have some impact later on. And that is important. The Christian must understand that he will appear before the beamer, the judgment seat of Christ, to receive his imperishable rewards. Right? So I made a little note here that the examiner, the judge at the, at the beamer is none other than the Lord Jesus, who is even now examining our lives as we run in the race right now. Those unseen eyes, they are there watching Watching if we're going over into the other lane. Some folks have their feet in both lanes. Be careful. You can be disqualified. So he's watching closely and examining our lives and will bring to light the true nature of our walk and our works when we stand before him. I leave those scriptures with us to delve into later. Revelation 1 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 5, there are scriptures there that brings out all the things that I am presenting to you right now. And so, brethren, beloved, it is important, it is important that we understand. And now Paul goes even further, so he's going to drill down further now. And he used a metaphor to the Corinthian church to, to give a picture or another picture of the judgment seat of Christ. And that is so very important. Brethren, this subject of the judgment seat that some folks either never know about or took it lightly or forgot about, I am telling you it is very significant. Notice the emphasis that the Apostle Paul placed on this whole matter. He spoke about it to the Romans. He spoke about it to the Corinthians. The Apostle John spoke about it. Peter spoke about it. The Apostles all spoke about it. It is an important doctrine in the church of Jesus Christ. Do not take it for granted. So Paul used metaphors to the church. And for the, one, the church in Corinth, he had done some things. And before I go there, let me just define and outline to us what a metaphor is. So a metaphor is a, a figure of speech. Right? Is a figure of speech that and we need to we need to get it properly because although Paul used the Olympics, it's not really an Olympic that we are in. He's kinda using it to bring across the point. Right? So it's not a real Olympic. But it brings across exactly what is happening in the realm that we are in. So a metaphor is a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to an object or an action uh, which is not literal. So he speaks about running, he speaks about race, he speaks about the thing in a sport setting. But it's not sports that we are really in, but it brings it across very vividly so that we can use that phrase to understand what is actually happening in real life all right or another definition is that it is a thing regarded as symbolic of something else so that is what we call a metaphor so what is it that is happening here now is that he used the metaphor of a building and he's saying that he presents a building with a strong foundation capable of holding the weight of the walls and the roof. Yes? And by these material, uh, sorry, with the material that we are going to use to do the building, 
we must be very careful. So what is happening here, brethren, is that Paul is saying that in our walk with God, as saints of the Most High God, we are building a house. We are building a structure. The only thing that he says is that we have nothing to do with the foundation. The foundation is already established. And what he's saying is that the foundation was established with the blood of Jesus Christ so that the foundation, other foundation can no man lay, lay than that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So the foundation is Jesus, well established, well set. And it is a strong foundation. But what Paul is saying is that we are building on this foundation. And all of us that are Christians, in our daily lives, we are building on the foundation that is already established. But he went further. He's saying that the material that we are using to build the structure on the foundation which is already set, the strong foundation, the expensive foundation, because understand, as I said before, that the foundation is Jesus Christ. And he was able to establish this foundation with his own blood so that this is an expensive foundation, children of God, people of God, saints of the Most High God. So he is now saying, here is the expensive foundation, costly. The blood, God's blood, costly. And it is set and it is solid. You don't worry about the foundation. You just build the structure now. So Paul is saying, every one of us are building. But then he said, be careful now how you build. Be careful what material you use to build. So he's drilling down into the thing now, you know. So he's saying that we are expected to build. And he's saying to us, there are some building materials that is available here on earth that we must use to erect the structure. And these building material, we're going to find that some of them are gold, silver, precious stones. And then he went on. Uh, there are some of them. And I want us to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 8 to 17. A long read, but I want us to read it. Because Paul is now using the metaphor of a building construction project in which there is a foundation, there's the walls, right? And there is the roof. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. And Paul is saying now, listen, as we build, make sure you're using good math. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verses 8, and we're going down to 17. And it's very important. And Paul is saying, look man, you're building, make sure you're using good material. You're building, make sure that it is solid. You're building, make sure that it is not cheap. Because this is solid foundation. This is deep stuff now. So Paul is now saying, Now he that planted and he that watered it are one. And this again is an analogy of what you would call agriculture. It's an agricultural analogy, right? And, and, and he's using an agricultural metaphor here. He, one plant, one water it. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. So he's using here, in this particular instance, uh, uh, an agricultural metaphor to say that what we are in is something of an agricultural nature. We are planting, we are watering. Of course, God is going to give the increase, but we will be rewarded according to our labor. And notice he said, every man according to his labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. So again, this is a vineyard, an agricultural analogy. So we are his children. We are in the vineyard working. We are planting and we are watering. And we are doing what is to be done. So that 
the, 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 the crops will come, the ripe fruits will bear. But he's saying that in the husbandry, in the vineyard, as we plant and as we water, is the essence of what he's saying, that be careful that you do the task of planting and watering well, because you will have a reward for it. So he's using a metaphor here, but this is an agricultural metaphor to bring out to us what it is that we are engaged in as children of the Most High God. And that is very important. So the scripture go on. Uh, it, verse 10, it goes on. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. So he's now using the metaphor of, const of construction, a builder. I have laid the foundation, another build it thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. So he's saying the foundation is laid and now others are doing the buildings. The walls must now go up, right? The roof and everything must go up. All the windows are going to have to be put in. Whole other thing is going to happen. So he's saying take heed how you build. Why did he say that? Because a building with a good foundation can go up and the building itself is weak. And if something can happen and the building tear down, the foundation will still be standing. But the building can be torn down. So he's saying, let every man take heed how he build thereon. So he's saying that all of us are builders. We are building, brethren, beloved. Let us read on. So take heed how you build. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And we just established that. All right? So the foundation is sure. Secure, solid, expensive. So we must make sure that we're using good material, expensive material, and this expensive foundation. Otherwise, we can be in trouble. But Paul said, take heed of your bill. You know why he said that? Because it is possible on this expensive, solid foundation for us to use some cheap material in our building. And if we use cheap material, it is going to be tested. And it is sure to fail if the material are substandard or inferior. So he said, take heed. Brethren, beloved, listen. Take heed how you build. All right. So verse 12 now says, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, then him go on, wood, hay, stubble, all build him, every man's work shall be made manifest. It comes back to us again, virgin beloved. It is going to be laid bare. It is going to be seen what we were using to build our house, to build, because all of us, based on the metaphor that he used, we are doing something towards that final day. And he said, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is virgin beloved the metaphor is that of construction building and he's saying that all of us are building and he said look here now Brett, look here take heed of your bill be careful what kind of material you're using be careful how you're projecting yourself be careful how you're tearing down what's supposed to be building up be careful how you take things in your ears from other people. You know, when they were building, the, rebuilding the, the temple, right? The walls of Jerusalem. As the walls were being built, you know, you know that there were some people that came across to Nehemiah and the others and was talking to them. I said, what are you wasting time for? You had some ballot and you had to buy a come and discourage the people from erecting the walls and doing the work of the Lord. And let me tell you, we must be careful because it's a good thing that Nehemiah was a man of God and was doing what had to be done. Ne them asked Nehemiah, them come and say, come down Nehemiah, I have something good to tell you. Come down from that now and let me tell you something. You know what they wanted to do? Kill him. But Nehemiah to say, look here, I soon come. Can't come right now. When I get a break. Because I have something that the Lord tell me to do. And let me just do it. But Nehemiah wrote and said, But I knew that they didn't want to tell me nothing. They wanted an occasion. They wanted him to come down to kill him. To stop the work of the Lord. Brethren, beloved, 
in the same way that the walls were being rebuilt back there and folks were trying to dissuade Nehemiah and those that were working to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. It is the same way oh, as we build, as we do what we have to do in our Christian walk today, there are those that this would be there to discourage you and to stop you and to say, look here, you're wasting your time and to look, look here, why are you being so old fashioned or why are you being so this the people have you in the bondage and the people have you listen to me be very careful saints of the most i god look into the word for yourselves and take heed how you build and what kind of material you're using you see the the, the bible talks about these you know paul outlined them you know gold silver precious stone then he went on to say wood Hey, stubble, right? And all of these things represent building materials. Stubble is what they call straw. All of these things, all of these things have something that is a part of the building process. Wood speaks to selfishness, self-centeredness. I want us to understand that we do things to be seen. Yes, we do things so that the focus is placed on us. We do things to get the attention of men. This is what wood speaks to and represents. And hay and stubble represents fleshy things. All of these things together. Straw, which is stubble, hay and wood. These are inferior material. These are perishable material. And they speak to self and the flesh. And on the other hand, those materials that are lasting and that are superior, gold and silver and precious stones, <coughs> sorry, gold speaks to true worship. We have no business what people say of us and how they talk of us, but we worship God in purity, tried, precious. Yes, silver speaks of redemption. Because there was a price for redemption. It was quoted. The denominator was in silver. And so silver speaks to talking about our redemption. When we go to witness, brethren, just do it. And do it as unto the Lord. And we must do it. Precious stones speak to the, the lives that we live. Our lives give praise to Almighty God. Our lives honor Him. We are worried about what people think and how we look. And we're not worried about what God is thinking and how God feels and what God wants. We, we be careful that we don't trade precious stone for hay and stubble. Be very, very careful. So here Paul is saying, no, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, we, 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 we need to understand that every man's work is going to be made manifest. We said it before, for the day shall declare it. And if any man work, abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So brethren, all that we are doing as we live here, the good deeds and the, the, the true heart and the pure motive, it is causing the building to go up. And if our work abide, when God turn his meticulous inspection on it, he uses the term, Paul uses the term, it's going to be tried by fire. Of course, it is not like a real fire. But whatever God is going to use, it is going to be meticulous. And he's going to be looking beyond the outside, right into the inside, to determine the true purpose that was behind all the things that you did. And when he did that, if it was not genuine, right, let me start first off, if it was genuine, Paul said, if any man work abide which he hath built here upon, he shall receive a reward. But if it wasn't genuine, it is going to be burnt through the meticulous inspection of the eyes of the Lord. And that man shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So the man won't lose his salvation. But all that he was doing down here is going to be burnt up. So I, I am making the point based on what the Apostle Paul uh, said earlier. 
based on what the Apostle Paul said earlier, we're making the point, and I'm just reinforcing it here again, just before we move to the next slide, I'm just reinforcing it. All that we have just said, all that we have just said, Paul is saying these things to make the point, because he uses the metaphors, as we just said, you know, it, it, it describes something else. You know, when they, you ever heard the term, it is raining cats and dogs? That's a metaphor. It means, really, it is raining heavily. But it's not like you go and look outside and you see cat just falling from the sky and dog on the ground. No, it's not literal. But it brings across the point. Yes, he's the apple of my eye. He's not an apple. You can't eat him or anything, or she's the apple of my eye. It's not that you can't eat him. It's not a literal apple. But the term means simply that he or she's precious to me. These are metaphors. You understand? Raining cats and dogs, the apple of my eyes, do metaphors to bring out the point. Paul is saying it's a building and the foundation is laid. You and I, we are putting up a structure by the type of life that we live. And we can do it in a way that because we are true to what we are involved in, because we are genuine in our pursuit, because we give to God of our time and our talent and our treasure, and we do it genuinely. You know, it's that when the Bible asks that we give, it said that we, 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 give, we don't give grudgingly, and he wants us to give cheerfully. It's important. Because if we do it with the right spirit, attitude, motive, it lends to the thing actually happening because God is honoring the collective work. But then it also does something to you as an individual. So be careful, you know. Why are you giving to this thing, you know, but me think, ah, oh, I'm foolish. I'm not even going to give thousands. Let me give a hundred, yeah, that if anything happens, I'm going to lose much money. Or it's grudgingly, sparingly. We do, we, when we give, our reward is going to be sure. We might not even get it back here. But we are going to get it back in the form of some reward that God has for us. Not because of the quantity that we give, but because the, of the heart with which we give it, gave it. I remember Jesus was speaking to a widow who came with her little mite. And she barely bowed her head and she gave, but it was all that she had. She gave it with humility. The other one come with his pomp and pageantry. And he could give out of the abundance of that which he had. And it did nothing to him. And it just... But attitude determines ultimately altitude. And Jesus said, that lady, that widow's might was much more than the other man who gave an abundant amount. But he gave it out of the massive collections that he had. It's not about the money. We can't do anything with your money, really. But it's not about the money. And when I give, I want to make sure that I give from my own heart. When you give, give from your heart. And note that it is our, not just money, but our talent. Oh, I'm going up to be there. I'm, I'm going to tear down this place today. I'm going to make them feel it with the word today. I'm going, I'm going to serenade them with this song today. Hello. Let us be careful of what we do with the talent. It is God that has gifted you. It is God that has gifted me. And we must be careful because we are building a structure with all that we are doing. And everything that we do is going to fall under six types of material. Two categories. Perishable and non-perishable. But six types of material. Gold, silver, precious stone. Wood, Hey, stubble. 
Of course, you're going to have some gold mixed up with some hair. Because some things you might do genuinely and others, do, you know, so you might have some silver mixed up with some wood. And so, you know, so God will test everything through his meticulous instrument. And then what was not genuine in terms of true motive is going to be destroyed. Some people go into heaven based on all the things what they're doing here and think so they have a big reward up there waiting and when God is through and this is how serious this thing is brethren beloved this is how serious this is and this is why I am not mincing words I am telling us as it is we're going to be looking for great rewards and we are going to suffer loss the only thing is that our souls will be saved but nothing will be. we're going empty handed even people who did this whole lot of things. So it's not in quantity. It's not in scope. It's not in what we did. But a big critical part is why did you do it? Were you forced? But I'm tired, but I just go become, you know, where I call me if I go hospital ministry. And you know, say every, every Sunday we're gone. And church take long today. And we kiss with teeth and we're gone. You did it. But what was really behind it? And we have to take heed, brethren. And that's what Paul was saying to us. And we can put on the roof. And at the end of the day, the roof tumbled over. At the inspection from the great inspector. When he test it, on that day, <coughs> sorry, we will find... That the roof can cave in, the walls can give way, all kind of things can happen. I believe with all of my heart that the white, the judgment seat of Christ, sorry, I believe with all of my heart that there will be great surprises there. I do believe it. I do believe that a lot of folks that expected to be on the honor roll, it's not going to be there. I am not God. And I can't see hearts and motives and so forth. But sometimes we see a little bit. Sometimes God allows us to see a little bit. I am convinced that a whole lot of folks will be surprised to find out that there really is nothing there. The Bible says lay up treasures in heaven. How are you going to do it, Leop Treasure? You think it's a bank, you have a bank, Evans Bank down here that you put in some money? And no. The treasures that you're going to lay up, the, whichever way, whether it's time, talent, or treasure, money, how you treat it, what God gives you, how you work with the time that He has given you, these are the things that we are going to use to see how we lay up treasure in heaven. And when folks don't take part in nothing, it is signaling. That they don't believe that there is going to be a judgment seat of Christ. There is no one that is sane and in their right mind. That can sit in the house of God doing nothing. And just coming to church every Sunday and think that it is all good and you're going to get your reward. You're not going to get a reward for just going through the gate. The reward is for the works that you have done. Going through the gate is because you surrender and you repent and you get baptized and you get the whole. That's what's going to take you through the gate. But the rewards is not for that. Paul said it. That's what we have been saying from last week. The rewards is going to be for how we have been building since we got saved. The rewards is going to be on the basis of what we have been doing. Don't let anybody tell you no nonsense that God is not looking at your works. Not to save you, but the work. He has called us unto good works. And Paul is then now saying that every man will have to give an account of himself for the things done in this life. It's the works, the things, what we did. That is work, whether good or bad. So this is the reality that confronts all of us saints of God. 
And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Who is listening? Take heed. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Because the day is coming. I am already introspecting, as I said earlier. I am already making note and taking the steps that will make the adjustments in my life. When I recap this subject matter, I trembled. I trembled. And I will be very happy tonight if folks are trembling tonight. Because that is, will push us to make the necessary adjustments and wrap things up so that for the rest of the time that we have, if we were, and this is a serious thing, you know, imagine, I am in the, 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 the construction thing, I do building every now and then, and I know that there are some people that put their, build their house on the hill, and when you see the kind of foundation that they establish because it's on the hill, some of them is all on some hillside with steep down, so you know you have to use some serious kind of foundation because you're on a hillside going down. It's a solid foundation, and that foundation is expensive. People who build on the hillside like that usually tend to build some big, fabulous, fancy house. So if you look on Beverly Hillside and you say, oh, those people, look at the big, pretty crown house on the hillside coming down, solid as a rock. Just imagine now that person built this extensive, massive foundation, very expensive, the kind of steel that he has to put into it. And then after all that foundation is set up, we use some little four-inch block because it's cheaper to build the walls. So, all right, me get the foundation now, come. Because you know you have some builders like that? They, they get a million dollars to build a million dollar structure and them take $500,000, siphon it off, and then take the next $500,000 and, and take off all a hundred more and say, boy, we only have 400 leaving now. So here what, we can't buy six inch and eight inch block now because the money too small. Make we get some four inch block and block up the place. They're not going to know because we're going to put the cement over and flash it. And then when they cut out all the window ways, you know, the man wants some window that when you turn the thing, you know, tick quarter inch, they buy some three eight. Boy, I'm not going to know, you know, but the, 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 the quarter inch, that a hundred thousand dollar loan for that we have to buy something called three eight for, for, for twenty thousand so guess what they do they wasted what was given to them they squandered what was given to them and then with what was left which couldn't do anything then buy cheap material and put on the expensive foundation of beverly hills and carry it up and when a little shaking take place or something happen, you see walls start crack and all those things. Cheap material, putting up cheap walls and cheap roof and all of those kind of things. And the people, them expensive foundation. And that is what I fear can be happening in the house of God. The expensive foundation that is already laid. And nobody can change the foundation. It is Jesus Christ. Other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid. It is here expensive and solid and we're taking cheap things because we squander we're lazy the slothful servant and the bible talk boy I, I think i'm taking too much time here so you know because we have more slides to run through and but pardon me is a little pastoral part jumping out and we we're putting cheap building material and expensive foundation cheap stuff it will hurt the owners down here and it is hurting the almighty god because we cheapening what's supposed to be a solid building and instead of using gold and silver and precious stone and do what we're doing is wood and stubble because of the kind of life that we are living we're not living to please god we're living to please men so many of us but thank god for the word and it has brought us so let's quickly jump back at the slide i'm not sure how much time i have left but we're going to try and see how far we can go amen so we have another five minutes and we have to stop. All right. So it is very important, saints of God, that we, we take time and see where we are. We have already gone through this and it is important that we understand that at the end of the day, Paul was making the point that some folks were trying to build with poor materials. They, they, they might be doing hard work, but then 
is that what is really required or all that is required their energies are misdirected in many instances and many folks are working to enhance and embellish their reputation and Paul is saying you know at the judgment seat it's not reputation you know we're going to come to it it is character so we have to be very careful so he's saying that the wood and the hay and the stubble watch it it is going to be burned up but then note also that those, there are some that are building yes with gold and silver and precious stones solid material their worship is genuine their life is pleasing to god and their lives are based on the word of god and anchored in prayer and fasting and they are depending on the spirit to take them through and they value character it's not about reputation no but it's about character two different things wood hay and stubble they, they are concerned about reputation and they want to look good in everybody's eyes but when you're anchored in god you're more concerned about true character because that's what god is reputation is what men think about your character is who god knows you are and that's what I want. I want God to know me to be somebody that is genuine. And if I am not God building me the right character, that is what I want. Yes. And what Paul is saying in this, when he uses this metaphor, is that he's showing now the, how thorough, the thoroughness of God's judgment. And brethren, he will see through anything. He will see through everything. There is absolutely nothing that will miss the sight and the eyes of Almighty God. Nobody who wastes time will slip through a crack. There will be no loopholes. And nobody who quietly worked and did what they did genuinely is going to get by and God didn't notice them. It's not going to happen. So I did say a while ago that there is going to be surprises at the judgment seat because some folks who thought that they have everything to get we find out that it is the other way around. And I also strongly believe that there is some folks that are quiet. They are silent giants. If it is to go to witnessing their dear, and their heart is just right anytime they're at it. They don't make any fuss. They are not upfront. They don't want the position that men can see them, but put them in a group, in a ministry. And they are there when they are called upon at any time. If they're at school or they're at work, an opportunity comes. They're not upfront. Nobody knows them, but one on one with that person, they're witnessing and telling them about God. That is what God wants. That is work that is building with good material and the motive is right and the, the 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 intentions are pure i am telling us saints of god there are going to be some folks that are quiet and in the background but they are doing the thing that god wants and they might believe that because they're not up front and everybody is seeing them and everybody knows them they are going to believe that Oh my, I, I'll settle for my little when I get there, if anything. Oh, saints of God, it might be you who is at the top of the list. And all the others who were running down position and running down the upfront seat and all of those things, that will be left behind. I want us to make sure that we understand what exactly it is that God will, will be looking for. And as I close... Three quick things. Our thoughts and intentions will be judged. Hebrews 4 verses 12 to 13. We're not even going to turn to it now. But it is here for us to go back to and then to jump into the scriptures. Our thoughts and intentions will be judged. Make no mistake about it. Soon we will be exposed. Whether for good or for bad. It is going to happen, saints of God. The piercing, probing omniscient eyes of jesus will see through everything that we do and he is going to be judging not what we do merely but he's going to go deeper than that for he's the one that knows deep inside of us and he looks straight and can separate between spirit and soul that is how deep he looks and he will look do his judgment and he will expose so critical point our thoughts and our intentions will be judged take heed 
take note. Our works will be judged. St. Matthew chapter 12 and 30, 30, verse 36. Make note of it. Read it through this evening or tomorrow. I want us, brethren, beloved, to go through this thing timely, right? Slowly and get it into our system. Let it soak in, as Minister Boucher would say, let it marinate over our soul and spirit and get into our system. It's very, very, very important, right? Christ is speaking to those things that we have covered up and refused to bring to him in confession and repentance. There are some things, you know, there are some things that we must note that we, we, we hide it. We, deep down inside it is there and we're carrying it for years. So although we are there and we are in our ministries and we're doing different things, we have some things that we, we, we're carrying and we have a secret grudge and we have something against this person and we're carrying it and we're carrying it and why is this person being used and I am not being used and why, be careful, you know, be careful, saints of God, I can't stress that point over and over over i say it over and over i can't over stress it be careful he will we will be judged in terms of our thoughts and our intentions we will be judged for our works our works will be judged make note of the scriptures go back to the thing read it and finally we will be judged in terms of our motives right our motives will be judged we are going to realize, and we read that scripture also, 1 Corinthians 4, 35. We won't go into it now, but we, you know, the time is upon us, and we must stop now. But when we get back together, God's willing, allowing it to happen next week, Wednesday, the big question now, we have heard a lot, we have seen that, my God, our thoughts, our intentions, God is going to bring that up. Of course, he knows it and he's going to judge us on the basis of that. Our works, sure, can we know about that. And Paul has been talking about that. But the scriptures talk about the thoughts and the intents. And then the scripture talks about the works. And now the very motive. What is driving us to do what we are doing? What has driven us to, 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 to stop that brother? Or to push that brother? Or to, to discourage that? What our motives if we get it, because you know what's going to happen, you know, sometimes some people run out. Some folks run out individuals for different reasons. And, and motives were there that were impure. And all of that has happened. And people leave church. Yeah, yeah, I leave. I, I couldn't stay there because the pastor preached at me. And the pastor pointing finger. I remember when he was preaching about wickedness and him point down. Every time that he turned and point is me point on. And then, you know, somebody pick it up now and say, you know, say, say Pastor, say you're wicked. Or the elder say you're wicked. And at the end of the day, somebody leave because it is said to them that you're wicked and they don't like you. And then the person who was behind all of that and the, behind the people leaving, they go to God one day and say, God, forgive me. You know, and repent. You know what God going to do? Tell me. Forgive them. For he's just and he's faithful and he's merciful. He's going to forgive them. But what about the folks that God, some of them are backslide because of some people. God, if you go to him for forgiveness, he's going to forgive you. And Yes, he will forgive you. But you see the consequence of the action at the time? You're going to be called to give account for that. Because those actions had repercussions. When David did what he did, the prophet came and said, God has heard your prayer of confession and your request for forgiveness. And he has forgiven you. But the child must die because is coming in the way that he came has brought a reproach and we have to get deal with the reproach so while i forgive you the consequence of what you do is still there this is going to happen and because of the reproach this is going to happen consequences are going to be there for all of our actions take heed from tonight as we go forward how we act how we do what we do look behind what we are doing why we do it 
and make sure we are doing it for the right reasons. So our thoughts and intentions, our works, our motives are going to be judged. When we meet again, God's willing, we are going to look at what exactly will God be looking out for at the white, at the judgment seat of Christ. When he sits on that beamer and we are gathered to him, what will he be looking for in our lives? Did the Bible outline it? Yes, it did. Has the Bible disclosed what he's going to be judging us on the basis of? Yes, it did. And this is why we must get into studying the word and there will be no excuse because you're supposed to know. And if you know and don't do it, no strife. If you don't know, still getting strife because you should know. But God's willing, we're going to go into that part. What will he be looking for at the judgment seat of Christ? God bless you. Let's bow our heads as we close. Father in heaven, we bless your great name. We thank you, mighty God, for another night in Bible study. We pray that you will have the words that we have shared to marinate over our souls. Let it soak into all of us, almighty God. And let us use the opportunity to make adjustments, to make the necessary changes so that our lives will conform to the word and that we will be uh, ready for the day when we stand before you. Whatever would have passed, God forgive us and help us to go on the right path for the remainder of our lives here on earth or until you come with the sound of the trumpet. Have your own way. Let your name be glorified. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. God bless you, saints of the Most High God. Thank you for tuning in one more time to Bible study. And as we say, God's willing, next week, same time, we continue on the subject of the, white, of the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. The white throne judgment is something that we would probably look at later on. But for now, we're talking about some specific doctrines of the church. And we are at the judgment seat of Christ. God bless you next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Faith Chapel, Faith Apostolic Ministries present Manifest 2023, a musical celebration. Join us at the United Apostolic Church, 205 24 Hollis Avenue in Queens, New York, for two unforgettable evenings of praise and worship, July 7th and 8th, beginning 7 p.m. nightly. Hear choirs and groups from the tri state area ministering and blessing our souls. Contribution $40, which covers both nights. Come and be blessed.